Thompson, I'd like to thank all of you for coming tonight, putting on this event. We're very appreciative anytime we have an opportunity to get out and talk to the people of Arizona, and in this case, the people of Scott's family. I've lived in Arizona for 31 years. I'm not a politician. I've never ran for office in my life. I was in the business world. I'm a retired businessman. I retired seven years ago when I was 54 years old. So if you do the math, you know I'm 61. And I've been very happily retired. Typically, I spent my summers in Flagstaff where I have a house. But this summer, I'm down here attending events daily, meeting people. I think this is the most important election in our lives. I think it is critical right now that we send the great people back to Washington, D.C. Our country's faced tough times before. We had some very tough times in the revolution. And every time we've had tough times, special people have come to the forefront and became the leaders that led us out of the difficult times. I did not want to vote for another politician. And that's why I got this race five weeks ago. I think right now that we need people to go back to Washington, D.C. that are proven leaders that have been successful and understand economics. We have a spending problem in this country. A lot of people let, like to believe we have a tax problem. We don't. We have a spending problem. Taxes is treating the symptom to the problem. The spending is out of control. As you probably know, our national debt is going to go over $16 trillion before the end of the year. It's $4.1 billion a day of additional debt. We have a deficit of $1.3 trillion this year. That simply means that all of the revenue that the government gets, and revenue is what? Your tax dollars, not just income tax. You're taxed 47 different ways. The government calls your money coming to them revenue. When they take all your money in, for every dollar they take in, the first 40 cents that they take in does what? Anyone know? Pays the interest on the debt. Got it right here. After we pay the interest on the debt, we pay the entitlement program, there's nothing left. And we still have to pay for the government to run. So it's $1.3 trillion deficit. We have got to make cuts, yet no one's making any cuts. I'm the type of person that's been very successful in business. I was an executive with a $150 billion corporation, and I've sat in those big conference rooms and had to make decisions that affected employment, my own included. And if you made bad decisions, you lost your job. If you made good decisions, you were rewarded. We have to send people back to Washington, D.C. that understand how to get collaboration, and I've done that. I know how to bring people together. One of the first things I think we need to do is tell Congress, the House, the Senate, the President, that if you don't operate under a balanced budget, you're not eligible for re-election. You want to see them scramble and start working? Tell them that. They like that job too well. You know, they've got too rich of a pension plan. They should not have a better defined benefit pension plan that's available to the private sector. Their health plan is way too good and way too expensive, and we all pay for that. These things have to stop. We have to get in there and make some tough cuts. It's a critical time. There's going to be some pain involved. We're all going to go through some pain. I'm going to tell you right now. You may not want to hear that, but it's true. But if we don't all go through some pain, this ship could sink, and we're all on it. That's why I came out of retirement. I'm not running because I want to beat everybody up here. I'm running because I want to go back to Washington, D.C. and make a difference for you, your families, your children, and your grandchildren. And I thank all of you for coming tonight. Look forward to answering your questions. Thank you, Jeff. I know you're done. You can agree with me later. Uh, I may not take, I hate to let you all down, I may not take the five minutes. I want to get to the discussion portion. Like Jeff, I'm not a politician. I'm Travis Grant. I'm a third generation Arizona. I'm a husband and a father. I'm a business owner. 
and I'm a pilot and an officer in the Arizona Air National Guard. I, I fly a KC-135 in the Phoenix Air Guard. I'm the rank of captain. I've been in that Guard unit for 13 years. I've served all over the world. We get asked the question as candidates all the time as to why we're running. And I tell folks, we have record debt. We are $16 trillion in debt in this country. That is a number that eclipses our entire annual GDP. And it poses a bigger threat to our ongoing survival, if you will, than any enemy anywhere in the world, than China and Syria combined, than Iran and its capabilities. The debt poses a bigger threat to our existence going forward in this country than anything else today in the world. We're spending 40% more than we take in. Our debt grows by about 6% per year. I mean, just to put that in perspective, we're lucky if our economy grows by 3% per year. And to add to this, we have a stagnant economy in this country. You know, I, I, I love to tell this story, and it's a convenient time to do it because none of the, none of the Democrats showed up, and I apologize to the, the ladies I was talking to a minute ago, but I'm, I'm going to tell a story about a forum we were at a week ago where we get asked, what's your stance on America's energy policy? How do you feel about sustainable energy, and what would you do to fix the problem we have in this country? We have an energy crisis. So, you know, we all gave our answers. And, and one of my Democrat opponents said, well, I like algae, and wind is good, and solar is good. And I agree with that. I wish everything could run on wind or solar, as long as you don't use my or your tax dollars to subsidize it. So a few more people answered the question, and I got the microphone, and I looked at everybody in the crowd like I'm looking at you, and I said, I don't know about you folks, but my car does not run on algae. It runs on gasoline. And it may not be the best solution 200 years from now, but it's what we have today. And we should be developing our energy sources in this country that are available to us. And increasing our dependency on our own oil, not foreign oil. We have a stagnant economy because of the bureaucratic nightmare that exists in Washington, D.C. You know, I, I own and operate a company, and we fly large airplanes all over the world. We're based at the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport, like I said. I have seen my user fees and my impact fees and my license fees and everything you can imagine go up tenfold in the last five years in this country. And it's not a Democrat problem. And it's not a Republican problem. It is a federal government problem. This federal government has its hands in way too many things. It has its hands in all of our pockets. And all it can do is write more regulation, more rule, and increase what it costs to survive and do business in this country. And it's got to stop. So that's what drives me to run. Serving in the military, I'll be one of about five House members who can vote to send our troops to war. I will vote before we go to war. That's important. You know, we have politicians in Washington sitting on the Armed Services Committee today who don't know the difference between an enlisted man and an officer. That's not a joke. So what I tell folks, and I'll tell you this, and every politician probably says it, and I, I, I just label myself a politician. I'm not a politician. But I promise to go to Washington and fight for what's right. I don't want to go make a career out of it. I don't want to stay my entire life. I want to go fix this country and make sure that everyone who comes after I do has the same opportunities I was afforded. And that's not happening today. I promise to not bring Washington, D.C.'s best special interest to Arizona, but to bring our best interest, the constituents of the 9th Congressional District, your interest to Washington, and actually fight on behalf of the state of Arizona and on behalf of the Constitution and on behalf of our country. It's an honor and pleasure to be here. I appreciate it. I look forward to taking your questions. Thank you. I thought maybe it was an opportunity for the Democrats to Hi there, as many of you know, I'm Lisa Borowski. I've got the um, good fortune and I take pride in serving most, if not all of you in the room on the Scottsdale City Council. Um, two people have come before me and said they're not politicians. That would certainly ring true of me. As many of you know, four years ago when I ran for council, I, I think most people, including myself, would have described me as apolitical or at least not very involved in, in 
political scene. I ran for, I'm a member of the Scottsdale City Council, which um, many of you know. I ran for the Scottsdale City Council because my, per my family was personally touched uh, by government over-regulation and uh, issues involving, you know, overreaching government. And so I stepped up. I would have never thought five years ago I would have ran for city council. I would have thought last year that I'd be running for congressional district at number nine. So the seat. I think I'm coming out, but you know. I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to represent the city. St. Joe's Hospital in uh, what is now CD9. I have uh, lived primarily in Scottsdale all my life with my family. I'm raising my beautiful little girl uh, in CD9. I am a practicing attorney. I have, uh, seven years ago, I founded my own firm, and I know what it's like to meet uh, payroll. I know what it's like to have obligations and to take care of, of my employees. Um, I recently joined a firm, merged with a firm, luckily. I, I think I am an upstart or a startup, if you will, um, because I, I was acquired by a very large firm and I'm a practicing partner there. Um, on the city council, what I think really has compelled me to run uh, for Congress is just the, it's human nature to grow. Uh, however, I see that day in and day out in government. I think it's government's desire and nature to grow. Making the tough decisions to say no to that, both at the bureaucracy, the bureaucrats, the employee level, and the special interest level, is something that even at the low level of the city council, we deal with every day. And what I have done over the past four years is demonstrated, not talked about it, but I have demonstrated my commitment and my uh, willingness to, to reject the requests for additional, you know, let's grow bureaucracy, let's grow government, let's spend more. Because, you know, to be honest with you, these are all very nice people. I love the people that work at the city of Scottsdale. But if we're not growing, you know, what, you know, what are we doing? And growing takes more tax revenue. Growing takes more of the taxpayers' money. So it's, it's difficult, uh, and you have to say no, and I'm committed to doing that on a regular basis, and I believe I've demonstrated that. Um, for the past four years, I've had the luxury of meeting the citizens, and I look forward to representing them in Congress. I am absolutely uh, dedicated to this task, and my record as a, not a politician, but as an elected representative of the citizens of CD9 will attest to. Thank you very much. My name is Leah Campo Shandlebauer, and I'm another one of these candidates running in the 9th District. I'm really happy to be here, so thank you very much for having me. Um, I recently resigned my post as, a, as an operations officer in the National Clandestine Service of the Central Intelligence Agency. I spent over a decade uh, living and working abroad, undercover, conducting operations for the CIA. And living abroad uh, and, and uh, learning about the sort of the underbelly of various countries, I began, uh, to be, I, I began to become frightened and worried when I heard rhetoric coming out of Washington that reminded me a lot of what I was hearing out of the mouths of tin horn dictators in countries like Venezuela. A lot of the race baiting and class warfare coming out of countries like that was emanating out of the White House. And I became very concerned with what I viewed as failed leadership in Washington. So I decided to resign my post to run for this office. So, you know, what I found over the years is that politicians send over campaigns with slogans and rhetorics and gimmick, get rhetoric and gimmicks to distract the voters and really make no effort to uh, try and get us out of the, bite, the, the partisan rut we're in, come up with new ideas, or at least for us conservatives, defend the old ideas that we know uh, are the cornerstone of our history and what has made our country great over the years. And so what I want to do is promise you that I'm going to do something different in this campaign. I'm centering my campaign 
on an energetic defense of the free enterprise system. I believe that the free enterprise system is the most moral way in which to organize a society. And not on material grounds. The free enterprise system is not about people going out and getting rich. That's one thing you can do. But it's really about defining your success, using your God-given talent and your hard work, and earning that success. And what I've seen in this country is that we're on a path, squarely on a path, towards European-style social democracy. What we've seen in Greece, Spain, Portugal, Italy, I can go on. But the problem with those systems is that they give their citizens learned helplessness, not earned success. And so I believe that this election year is the most important one, as everyone else here has said, because of that. Because if we don't right the ship of state and get our country right back on the track to a free enterprise system, we are going to be that cautionary tale that we see in Europe, in Greece, and in Spain, and in Italy, where people don't know how to work, don't have the human dignity that comes from earning their success and defining it, going out and, and working hard for it. And that's what I intend to do this election year, uh, or this campaign, excuse me. A little bit about me, um, I am a mother of four. My husband, Alfred, is currently um, deployed to Afghanistan, will be there for the coming year. Uh, my parents are here, my, my mother is an immigrant from Spain, and my father was born and raised in Superior, Arizona and joined uh, the military, uh, the U.S. Air Force, at a young age, and served all over the world, uh, taking me and my, my siblings um, to the corners of the world. But when we were back in the States, we were right here in District 9, where I grew up from junior high through University of ASU in Mesa, uh, and then, of course, ASU in Tempe. And um, now we're, uh, we're joining together as a family. Uh, Hillary Clinton says it takes a village. I say it takes a family to help me through this campaign while my Husband is in Afghanistan, and I, I promise uh, you and, and uh, all the voters of District 9 that I'll center my campaign on this robust defense for the free enterprise system because I believe it's truly the only way we're going to get out of the uh, structural problems we're facing as a country. Um, you know, in closing, I'll just say that you know President Reagan said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said once that uh, liberty and freedom was um, only a generation away from extinction. It, we can't pass it along to our children through our bloodlines. We have to fight for it and we have to defend it. And so what I can tell you is that if I'm to be your next representative in Congress, I will spend my time and my votes defending and, and fighting for that freedom and that liberty. Thank you. Some great opening statements, I was all impressed. I think as we travel along uh, together, most of us, most of these forums, everybody here, I can tell you, my own opinion, they care about this place. They care about what we're doing. They want to make this place better. And that's why I think all this women's race. Uh, compared to some of the other races we can read about and see on TV, this is great. I'm really happy to have this uh, level of uh, professional quality. <coughs> so I'm Martin Sepulveda. I'm running for Congress in this district, C9, because it's my home. I live here. In fact, uh, my family goes back quite a few years. They homesteaded in Tempe at Brillard University, 160 acres in the 1870s. So we've been here quite, quite a while. Uh, I'm an ASU uh, graduate. I met my wife there. We raised our family in Chandler. I started my business there. I was elected twice, two non-consecutive terms to city council there. I'm a military guy. I enlisted in the Marine Corps when I was 17. I'm now 52, and I'm a commander of the Navy Reserves. I'm currently assigned to a reserve SEAL team in Coronado, California. I'm also a combat vet, and I've seen some of the best and the worst we've seen in the world. My takeaway from that is this. Every time I return home from deployment, I want to do whatever I could to make my home a better place. I care deeply about our community, our state, and our nation. I'm a small business owner. I said I've been deployed quite a bit these past years, but I've still maintained my small businesses because of great partners. My experience is I've got 20 years of business experience in the public and private sector. Before I started my company, I worked for a very large construction company, McCarthy. They've done quite a bit of work around here. Before that, I was with the Arizona Department of Commerce and Business Development. So in those 20 plus years, my takeaway is this. Government doesn't create jobs. The best it can do is create conditions for success. A reasonable regulatory environment, a predictable and competitive tax environment, and get out of the way. 
let the private sector create jobs and wealth. That's what they do best. The two terms I serve on the Chairman City Council are non consecutive terms. I tell you that because I too am not a career politician. Also, I saw it as a couple of tours of duty. We did a lot of great things. We did some knucklehead things during those eight years. But what I'm most proud of is this. The eight budgets we had, everyone was balanced. No gimmicks, we balanced all the budgets. We had cash reserves, we even lower taxes on a couple of occasions. The other thing we did right was this. We engaged the private sector. Intel's a big company in Chandler. They, they got there probably the, the late 70s, early 80s, and they started to expand. Their first major expansion, though, they needed some help. They needed us to help them adjust the corporate tax rate because it's too high, or so they're going to go somewhere else. We listened to them. We did what we could. The first expansion resulted in a $2 billion expansion, almost 2,000 jobs. They're still expanding today. This project they're working on right now is $5 billion. So the total investment in Chandler, Arizona is $15 billion and almost 10,000 jobs. And I tell you that because the experience I have from the private sector that helped me as an elected official help these guys help themselves and in turn help to be in the state. And I'm also proud they're still doing that in Chandler. So leaving Chandler for a little bit, this election is very important. We've all said that we all know that. We focused on this campaign, on our campaign, Jobs and the Economy. And the job picture was looking better for quite some time, according to the media. Uh, I was trending downward, still high, but still trending downward. That stopped last, last month. Unemployment's going back up, national employment. So what we've done is we've put, laid out a five-point jobs plan. First one talks about corporate income tax. Second one talks about redu uh, reducing the uh, regulatory environment. The third, which is one of my favorites, is a small business owner, reduce or eliminate tax for the middle class. Why? Because most business owners, small business owners, they create quite a few jobs in this nation are in the middle class. We reduce those taxes, you spend more in your company and in your, uh, your community. The last two uh, points real quickly are uh, increase the sky song type technologies and computers, the venture capital starts in university and can spin off to the private sector. And the fifth is exports. The more we, the more we manufacture in this country to export, the more wealth we have coming back in. So I'll close right there. I hope we talk more about job and economy and, and really what our plans are. But I certainly look forward to this uh, discussion tonight and uh, I thank you for having us.